So keep the camera steady, Ed. I'm gonna give you the greatest disc golf story ever told. Once upon an Albert Tom, I was fishing at the crazy John Brooks, but I hadn't caught any Andrew fish that were very Garrett girthy, and I was getting more frustrated with every Nico LeCastro. Plus, I wish someone Coda Hatfield warned me about the AJ Risley bear prowling around, but it's still Greg Hosfeld great just to be out there. About that time though, my sister rang the Matt Bell for lunch, which meant it was time for me to Christina Lint to come home. So I Alex rustled up my gear and started a Ken Climb of the Big Hill back to our Zach Arling house. When I'd gone about a half a mile seaborne, I came up to the Zoe Ann Dyke and heard a huge Ellen Wid boom like somebody had just tom shot a Missy Gannon. Turns out, Harold Duval it was, was somebody shooting their double Anthony Barella shotgun at a stork Roddick on the other side of the Vanessa Van Dyken. But it flew off and went to Henna Blomroos in a Kyle Crabtree. I still needed to get Sarah Hokum, so I picked up my Dave Donna pace as I was Kevin Jones in to get back for lunch. You know, meal times with my family is something that I, Joe, revere. And I don't know what would Marty happen if I missed out on the Terry Rothless burgers with a Honey Cameron Cole Glazer and Chandler fries that we were having. So I Andrew Press knelt on. Suddenly I came up to a fallen Eric Oakley tree that had Paul Ulibarried the path. And when I tried to jump over it, one of the Logan Bowers caught my Grady shoe and I fell flat on my Jeff face. So now my leg's stuck, I've torn my Adam hammies, and my arm had landed in a patch of Jessica Weiss and it was covered in Chris Dickers and stuff. And on top of all that, I would have bet a Matt Dollar that I had dropped a Seppo Paiu in my brand new Kale of Viscas and then made a Cam Messerschmitt. Come on, dude. Too far. Listen, Brody Smith, just you Philo Brathwaite. Okay, there's much Callie McMore, and this is the Paul Macbeth part. I didn't know if I had the Brian Earhart to go on, but I knew I was too Heather Young to die. You know, I normally think where there's a Will Shoestrick, there's a way, but my normal sense of positivity was really Zach Melton. So as I'm laying there, and listen, I would not make this up, okay? I consider myself a good Christian Dietrich. I'd never touch the Andrew Marweed, and lying is something that I wouldn't Justin Billa do. So as I'm laying there, I hear the page-piercing cry of an Eagle McMahon that emerged out of a sunbeam and landed right in front of me, which made my heart Luke Humphreys. It looked me right in my KJ Naibo and said, which means you can do this. Be the Haley King that I know amites me you are. I took that as a Paul Omen that I was gonna be a Joel Freeman soon and nothing was gonna Tim Barham my way. At that point, I was Des Redding to get back home and you'd be surprised the Cal Klein of extra motivation you can get when your leg's stuck with a Josh Anton and trying to bite your Stancil Johnson. So I took Ezra Adderhold of my Ricky Wysocki and pulled as hard as I could. And at Holly Finley came John Halka, the page shoe, and I half limped half Madison Walker the rest of the way home. Sadly, when I got home, my mom had decided to lease a fake us out and make Brian Schweberger's instead, which when life gives you Chris Clemens, you know, I let out a sad Simon Lazat and started a Mike Mosier over to the table when my mom told my sister, hey, would you be a Nathan Queen and Austin Hanum the soap? He's filthy and I'm worried about big germs. After I'd eaten a bit, I felt Dave Greenwell enough to tell him what had happened, and I definitely felt I'd Devin Owens them an explanation for my Kristen Tatard clothes. My sister thought my story was James Conrad, but my mom called me a spacey Casey White and said I was lucky we weren't at the James Proctor's office. Just then, my dad got home and made quite the entrance as he tripped over the welcome Matt Orham and kicked the Cat Allen into my uh, Drew Gibson guitar. I think he Dave Feldberg sorry for me a little bit because he said, why don't we all go play disc golf Tom Monroe morning? which Nate Perkins me right up. So let me finish this Yale story by saying that disc golf is the greatest game ever. Because for one thing, it keeps people from sitting around on their Valerie Doss all day, and eat sex in each other and whatnot, and gets them out in nature, where they can bury Schultz their problems and take in the Reed Frescura air. Emerson Keith name drops in that story, huh? You know, I didn't want a Jordan Castro too wide of a net, but my sister wrote that, and I told her she has to crisscross at least 100 names off the list before I'd let her Steve Reed go home. Comment below with your favorite famous disc golfer reference, and if this video made you smile, please consider sharing it with somebody you think might appreciate it. All right, I'm Evelina Salin and Up, but before I go, I want to prove to you that I actually missed that putt in the video on purpose. Dang it.